So let's imagine the following situation. Suppose we have an infinitely long frictionless table. And suppose we take a ball and we allow the ball to roll. We release the ball and it rolls on our table. What will happen to our ball? Well, our ball will continue to roll forever unless a net force acts on the ball, such as my hand stopping the ball. Likewise, suppose I take a ball and I place it down on my table and allow it to be stationary. So my ball is at rest. What will happen to my ball? Well, my ball will continue to be stationary unless a net force such as my hand pushing the ball acts on my object. So Isaac Newton came up with the following idea. He said that unless a net force acts on an object, those objects will tend to remain in their current state of motion or state of rest. And he called this concept the law of inertia. Now he defined inertia to be the tendency of objects to maintain their state of rest or state of uniform velocity or uniform motion. So once again, if we have a stationary ball on a frictionless table, that ball will remain stationary unless a net force acts on our ball. Likewise, if our ball is moving with uniform velocity along a frictionless table, unless a net force acts on this ball in the opposite direction of motion, this ball will continue to move along its path. So inertia is a very interesting concept, but we really need to know how to measure inertia. What is the quantitative measure of inertia? Well, it turns out that the quantitative measure of inertia of an object's inertia is simply the mass. And mass is usually given in kilograms. Now, suppose I take this battery and I let the battery go. The battery will continue to travel unless a net force acts on my battery, stopping the battery. <coughs> For example, suppose I take this battery, I let it go, and my hand acts on the battery to stop the battery from moving. So my hand is the outside net force that acts on this battery and stops the battery from continuing its path. Now, when I drop the battery on my hand, my hand feels a force. In other words, this mass will exert a force on my hand, right? So it turns out that whenever a net force acts on an object, the mass of the object will resist the change. And the amount of force that any object exerts on another object is directly proportional to the mass. So, if I take this battery and I double its size, the force my hand will feel will be larger. Likewise, if I if, if say the mass of this is 20 times the mass of this battery right now, if I drop this battery then, my hand will probably not be able to stop the battery because this battery will be way too heavy. For example, if I take this 50 pound dumbbell, what will happen if I drop this dumbbell and my hand will be in the way? Well, my hand will feel a very, very large force and my hand will not be able to stop that dumbbell from going straight past my hand. So in other words, the larger the mass of the object, the more inertia the object carries and the less likely my force, my hand force, will stop that object. So I will need a higher or a larger net force to stop my object from moving. Now, we need to differentiate between mass and weight. The two things are different, but they are related. Now, weight is the force an object feels so a force that some object mass 1 feels due to another mass, mass 2. For example, whenever I stand on the scale, the scale reads a certain weight. And what the scale is actually reading is the force that I feel due to the earth. So the earth is pulling on me, it's pulling me down to the center of the earth. And this force is read by my scale, it's given by mass times acceleration. And we'll talk about that in a future lecture. But for now, it's sufficient to know that mass and weight are two different things. Mass is our inertia, while weight is a force. And mass, regardless of where the object is, will stay the same. So, if I take the object, this object has the same mass on Earth as it has on the moon or in space. 
But if I take this and weight this on the ground on Earth and on the ground on the Moon, they will have two different weights. And that's because the gravitational pull of the Earth is much higher than that of the Moon. 